Tonight on New Center, Vulcan Village falls prey to vandals. A former penguin discusses the traits of a true leader. Man vs. Mountain takes place in Heron. And PSAC football players try to improve their draft stock. New Center starts right now. Good evening and welcome to CUTV News Center for the week of April 1st, 2010. I'm Will Moore, in for Shelby McAdams. And I'm Mark Stemka. Vandalism here in California as a local apartment complex is defaced. Now police are asking for the public's help in finding out who committed the crimes. Last week, on two separate occasions, air conditioning units were knocked over and spray painted. In the wake of these incidents, damage could cost anywhere from a couple hundred to thousands of dollars. This cell phone footage, taken of the damage to the air conditioning units at Vulcan Village, shows the senseless vandalism that took place on two separate occasions last week at the off-campus complex. Scott Helfrich, the community manager at Vulcan Village, told CUTV exactly what took place. We had some individuals come onto the property. We're not really quite sure whether they were residents who lived here or guests or other students um, came to the side of some of the buildings and toppled over some of the compressor units for our heating and air conditioning systems, um, actually breaking some of them. And by doing that, it, it, it stops the air conditioning and the heating working in those particular apartments that those are attached to. While the damage to the air conditioning units could be expensive to repair, up to $800 per unit, Helfrich says at least vandalism at Vulcan Village is a rare occurrence. We don't really have a whole lot of vandalism on the property. From time to time, we'll have exit signs that are broken, emergency exit signs in the stairwells. But I think students are, are very respectful of the property and their guests are respectful of the property. So we don't really have a whole lot of things like this occurring. If you have any information regarding these destructive acts, you are asked to contact either California Borough Police or the Cal U Office of Public Safety. They can be reached at 724-938-4357. Fire tore through and destroyed a Westmoreland County building Thursday morning. Emergency crews were called to an abandoned building on Schoonmaker and 9th Streets in Manesson around 7.30 a.m. When crews arrived on scene, heavy smoke was pouring from the building. Neighbors were evacuated as a precaution, but no one was hurt. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. The Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education announced this week a new Voluntary Retirement Incentive Program. The program will be available to any full-time employees of the university that are at least 60 years of age or have 35 or more years with the school. Even though the incentive has yet to be approved by five separate labor unions, the option has a limited window of opportunity that will close on May 28th. An informational meeting will be held at the university in the near future to discuss the option with any, any, any employees interested in the program. Only a few days are remaining in the second round of the Pittsburgh Penguins auction to benefit university scholarships here at Cal U. In this round of bidding, items available include autographed Evgeny Malkin and Sidney Crosby jerseys, an autographed goalie stick from Mark andre Fleury, and the biggest item, a Penn's game night experience, including a tour of the under construction Consol Energy Center. Bidding is only open until April 2nd at 5 p.m. To bid, log on to www.pittsburghpenguins.com and look for the CalU Scholarship tab. And the CalU Pittsburgh Penguins partnership is continuing uh, this week. And this week we had a Pittsburgh Penguins legend come here to CalU, and sports anchor Allison Steinheiser is here with us with that story. Yeah, Phil Work was actually here on Tuesday, but those auction items sound really cool. I bet the building is getting up there pretty good. Yeah, I saw today that the uh, the Penguins game night experience with the Consol Energy Center tour, the, that's all the way up to uh, $1,200 now. Wow. That'd be really cool to get inside of that before we, uh, before the arena comes down. Mm -hmm. so, so, Allison, uh, why was Phil Work here? Well, each year the Leadership Advisory Committee Board and the Leadership Studies Program has a speaker come in and talk to the students about what it takes to be a leader. This year they decided to have a two-time Stanley Cup champion speak about what he believes leadership means. 
Leadership's everything. I mean, it's uh, you don't have to be the best player to be a leader. You can lead by a, a lot of different ways. And Just like having different playing styles, leaders can lead in many different ways. I tried to lead by my work ethic. And uh, you, know, you had a player like Mario Lemieux who led a lot by example, by uh, his great skill and uh, the abilities that he had. So Although there are many different styles of leadership, there is one way that Bork believes is the most influential. Leadership is, is a is a word that has so many different defini definitions, but really the best way to lead is, is by your actions and by your examples. Being a leader does not end when you leave the workplace or group. You can be a leader even at home or around friends. You know, leading by example with my kids or my colleagues or um, you know, just people who are ob observing me that uh, you, know, you try to be a leader in, in, in everything you do. And a good leader is able to help everyone on the group and improve the team as a whole. The, the great leaders on a, on a hockey team, whether it's a player or a coach, uh, identifies who potentially is the, the weakest link and is able to, to bring them in and make them a part of the team and make them think they can be better than maybe they actually think they can be. One piece of advice Borg has for students who want to become leaders is to prepare. Leading your life the right way, preparing yourself to when these opportunities come, when somebody says, I need you to be the boss of this project, I need you to be the captain of this team, that you're not going, oh man, what do I do here? Start preparing yourself now for these opportunities. Knowing what you want to become is important in becoming a better leader. Leadership is something that can be developed, and uh, when, you're, when you're coming to class and you're thinking like, okay, well, what do I really want to be? What do I want to get out of this? Educating yourself about leadership is essential in improving your leadership skills. You read books and, and meet people and talk to different people and, and try to find what makes these people great. How did you become so great? And just, just educate yourself on leadership. Phil, Burke, Phil Bork is currently the Penguins radio color analyst and works alongside the legendary Mike Lang during games. Organizations on campus are always looking to find new ways to get involved with activities. The CU TV's Alex Kunkel visited the Heron Recreation and Fitness Center where a new club is looking to get students to reach new heights by joining their organization. Kunkel on the campus of California University has been a hit with students so far, but earlier this year a new aspect was added to the attraction to increase its popularity even further. On Monday, the Heron Recreation and Fitness Center sponsored a climbing competition at the new rock wall in Heron Gymnasium. The competition was broken into two groups, a men's wall and a women's wall, and winners were chosen from each side based on the time it took to scale each designed course, the fastest times winning. Tim Baugh, a member of the climbing staff at Heron, explained some of the details from the competition. Here at the Climbing Wall, we offer competitions every month, basically. We give away prizes. Uh, some of the prizes include gas cards, subway cards, bookstore cards. Overall, there were 12 competitors at the event, including seven men and five women. Members of the climbing staff at Heron assisted the climbers in getting their equipment on properly, by belaying and timing them, and also by fixing loose climbing stones as they were reported. Even if the climbers were relatively new to the wall, though, they still felt comfortable with their performance. I'm done. I thought I did okay. I messed up one time, but it's okay. I think I did good. Other students even go as far as to keep track of their best times as they look to improve on them each month. I think it's like, like 40, 42. Yeah, for now. Boss says that one of the driving forces of each competition is just to get people to the rock wall. We try to increase the amount of people we have every month, bringing new people in to climb, and hopefully we keep to increase the population of people climbing at the university, and the climbing wall becomes an increasingly busy place. Now the next competition will be sometime in the month of April, but if you want to practice or just want to get some experience on the wall, it's located on the second floor of the Heron Fitness Center and is open most days of the week. From the campus of Cal U for CU TV News Center, I'm Alex Kunkel. Alex, thank you very much. So, Will, have you uh, done the rock wall yet? No, actually, I'm I'm far too intimidated by that thing to try it. I, I keep I want to, but it's it's kind of scary looking there. I'm hoping to get to it sometime in the next month. I mean, it's been up for a while. It was a huge part of the renovation, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But, yeah. Well, if you get the chance to go outside and do some real rock climbing, this would be an absolutely perfect weekend to do it. Weather is up next here, and uh, student meteorologist Jason Rouchard has a great Easter forecast for you.